If you look around the mainstream market, SUVs and crossovers have completely dominated the space, and in the luxury segment, that's pretty much the same story. But Lexus still persists with this. This is the 2020 LS500, their flagship sedan product, the most luxurious one money can buy. So no styling changes to speak of for 2020 model year. This is still a really long, really majestic car. It's got a really long wheelbase, and you can just feel the presence when you walk up to this car in person. Of of course, you've got that huge Lexus front grille, very intricate on this LS500. Of course, the F Sport grille looks a little bit different. We've got the optional 20 inch chrome wheels, 19 inches comes standard. I actually love the way these look. If there's any car that can rock chrome wheels, I think that it's this one. Now, the big story is under the hood, the V8 is gone. There is now a 3.5 liter twin turbo under the hood of this LS500. Now, let's go get it on the road so we can see how that engine feels. Whoosh, that's the feeling you get when you're driving a Lexus LS500. Now, as I mentioned, big story is no more V8 engine under the hood. That's gonna anger some of you, but I want to make it plain and simple. This is, aside from the five liter V8, the best engine Lexus makes. Now, the five liter V8 is phenomenal, but this one is just so buttery smooth. It measures 3.5 liters, develops 416 horsepower, which is plenty, and 442 foot pounds of torque. So you never feel like you're stressing this engine. It's just so meaty, such good power delivery. It goes out through a 10 speed automatic and I love this automatic. It works so great when you're just driving around comfortably, and now I need to go for a downshift quickly. It almost feels immediate as I go down on the throttle. It just instantly downshifts. Very good feeling. Will get you to 60 miles an hour, regardless of rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, in only 4.6 seconds. So that feels pretty quick in a beast like this. The F Sport doesn't add any more power, only suspension modifications. Um, there is no full-on F version of the LS500 just yet, although the rumor mill is starting to circulate that they're gonna be putting a twin turbo V8 under the hood of this car and the LC500 with 600 horsepower. So that should be pretty lively. I should also mention that there is another engine you can get under the hood of this car. You can get a regular three and a half liter V6 with no turbocharging and that's paired with a hybrid drivetrain. It produces 354 horsepower. Toyota and Lexus don't quote torque on their hybrids. I wouldn't even consider that car. Maybe if all you're doing is like chauffeuring people around the city, maybe, because it does get a little bit better gas mileage than this car, but that drivetrain just doesn't feel as buttery smooth, doesn't feel as powerful. You can't just step on it and get this great smooth, linear power of this twin turbo V6, so this is definitely the engine that I would get. It's very quiet in here. Um, it is quite uh, insulated from the outside. We do have the double thick glass here, but I'm not gonna say that this is the most quiet car I've ever driven, especially not in this $100,000 plus segment. Now, the suspension is variable, so we've got variable suspension with electronic air springs, and it's very soft and very plush. I'm not gonna say that this car isn't comfortable, because it is very comfortable, but we're on I-4, which is one of the most uncomfortable roads in the world. If you know any Floridian, they've probably complained to you about this road. There's so many undulations, the tarmac is all torn up, and when we go over some of these bumps here, I'm kind of feeling my head jiggle around a little more than you'd expect from a $115,000 vehicle. I feel like Lexus had engineers saying, well, we're gonna build the LS, just like we've always done. Soft, cushy, reserved, not a lot of steering feel. And then there was another portion of the engineers who wanted to combat BMW and Mercedes and make this car a little bit sportier. And there must have been a battle in the, in the boardroom somewhere because this car just feels like it wants to be two cars and I'm kind of getting a not a great feel for what this car wants to be. And what's interesting is, I've driven like old Lexus LS's, like the 460 and the 430 and the 400. 
no steering feel. This thing actually has incredible steering feel. It's actually a very good driver's sedan, which is kind of not what I want from an LS500. We do have some drive modes here. I can put it in sport. There's even a sport plus, which just seems weird to me in an LS500. It definitely makes the throttle a little better. You can hear some pumped in engine noise. So that's a real pretty cool too. But there's so many drive modes that I've played around with all of them and you don't feel like you're driving a completely different car no matter which one you have. So I think they wasted their time putting too many drive modes in here. I would have been fine with like normal sport and comfort. Eco, Sport Plus, just too many modes for me. So this is a very nice driving car. I do wish it was a little bit more comfortable, but overall, I think you are going to get in this car. If you've never driven a car in this price bracket, you're gonna be amazed at how smooth and quiet this car is. Now we're gonna go ahead and pull over to show you the interior where this car really shines. And the LS500 comes extremely well equipped in terms of safety features, but we do have an optional $3,000 package that gives us active steering, lane keep assist, all of that kind of stuff. If I do take my hands off the wheel, it is going to keep me in my lane, but whoa, it really ping pongs between those two lanes. It does ask you to put your hands back on the wheel at a certain point, but I have my hands off right now and I really don't feel worried that it's gonna crash, but it's definitely not the best system I felt. That ping ponging just tends to make me a little bit sick, and I think if you had somebody riding in the back, they would definitely get sick. Before I show you the actual cabin, I want to spend just a quick minute talking about one of my favorite features on this car that comes as part of a $23,000 package. Yep, that's the price of a Toyota Corolla on one package, but it looks gorgeous. It's this Carico cut glass. Now, Carico, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is a Japanese art of cutting glass by hand. And the result is this absolutely stunning crystal interior. I've seen automakers do wood, aluminum, all those sorts of things, but I've never seen glass used in such a way. It really comes alive when the sun hits it, and when you move your head around, it just kind of glistens. Now, the Carico glass is paired with this sort of pleated cloth uh, on the door. They use Japanese origami techniques to fold it, and it looks three-dimensional. It simply looks gorgeous. All of that is paired with the LS's beautiful uh, door design. You've got this big piece of leather here, and of course, the controls for the window switches are housed on this sort of floating leather piece. It's not actually floating, it is connected to the door, but the way they've designed it looks like it's just kind of floating in this area with the pleated cloth behind it. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So now coming into the main cabin, the LS500 is beautiful. Lexus's design language in here has just been phenomenal. Just like that LC500 we checked out earlier this year, the materials in here are excellent. We already checked out the Carico glass and the folded cloth, but all of the leathers in here and the metals are just really nice as well. This steering wheel feels very premium. You even got stitching around the gauge cluster, which is digital. We do have a normal tachometer for our fuel gauge and engine temperature. Temperature. But here we have digital gauges that uh, they do change designs when you use your LFA inspired uh, drive controller, same one you'll get on an LC500. But as I mentioned while we were driving it, I don't really feel that big of a difference between the drive modes. So I haven't really been touching this too much while I've been driving this car. Now the biggest downside of this uh, interior, because it's not the design, I love these beautiful streaks, I love the little light up design element here, it's this screen. <coughs> It's pretty big, it's pretty clear, it's pretty high resolution, but the way that you control it is still this Lexus touchpad. We've seen on the 2020 Lexus RX that Lexus is now going back to touchscreens, but not yet on this LS500. So to demonstrate why I don't like this system, I'm gonna ask my camera guy, Kelso, give me a task. You should turn on your heated seat. I should turn on my heated seats. Um, yeah, there's no button for that, so I'm going to have to push this button for the seats. That takes me into the seat menu, and then I need to take my cursor. Okay, so now I'm on seat adjustment. I have to go over here to seat climate. Okay, there it is. Click that. And now, all right, there's my heated seat. I can turn it up. I can turn it down. Here's the passenger heated seat. Here's the passenger steering wheel. But you see how many steps that is? I want to just go beep, 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 done. Beep, 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 off. I don't want to have to go seat, over to climate, on my heated seat. 
too many steps, I find that really annoying, and trust me, trying to do that while you're driving, definitely not fun, definitely not easy to do. You can voice control some of these things, but it really does get rather annoying after a while. Now, the seat itself, fantastic adjustment, although like I said, kind of annoying to adjust because you have to do a lot of it on here. But we're gonna go ahead and check out the back seat because that's the really special part of this LS500. So I mentioned that $23,000 package. You get a little bit more than just some fancy glass on the doors. Here's where your money is really spent. So you can get power adjustable seats in this car even without the $23,000 package, but this is where it becomes really special. When you fold down this center armrest, this does go up, you get a little touch screen on here. And if I push this little button, it'll automatically send this front seat as far forward as possible, giving me the most legroom as possible. But as you saw before, it only has about 38.9 inches of legroom, which is really not that great. I think a Ford Edge actually has more than that technically. But here's something that you do not get in a Ford Edge an ottoman, that's right, an ottoman. So I'm pushing on the touch screen now and I'm just waiting for it to come up, power adjusted of course. I get a little footrest so I can bring my feet all the way up. So now I can go to the recline and I can push the seat back and I can slide. Now I can relax with my feet up. How many cars really let you do this? This is an incredible amount of luxury and it's more than just seat adjustment that I can do on this touchscreen. I can put this sunshade up if I want to bask in the light of the sun or if I want it to go away, I can push it again and I can you know, shield myself from the sun. I can open up, I have my own sunroof back here. I can shut uh, that sunshade as well. I've got heated and ventilated seats and because I opted for the $23,000 package, I've got massage back here as well. So this is just a phenomenal place to spend time. Although I did chauffeur some of my friends around in this car and they did note that when I was a bit heavy on the brakes and you're in this seating position, it kind of feels like you're gonna slide under the seat belt. But I think if you're a big wig CEO, you might get used to that after a certain amount of time. The time to price out our 2020 Lexus LS500. We were driving the all wheel drive model, but I'm gonna give you pricing for all different configurations. Starts at $75,450. That makes it a lot less expensive than the German options like the Audi A8, BMW 7 Series, or Mercedes S Class, though it is more expensive than the Korean Genesis G90. You're going to pay $75,450 if you want rear wheel drive. Our all wheel drive option is $78,670. Now, I would definitely opt for the rear wheel drive unless you live in a cold climate and plan on driving this car every day because with rear wheel drive, you're going to get 19 mpg in the city, 30 on the highway and 23 combined with all wheel drive those numbers get cut down to 18 27 and 21 respectively now 0 to 60 is going to take 4.6 seconds regardless of whether you get rear wheel drive or all wheel drive you can also get the f sport that's going to make this car look a lot sportier but it's also going to hurt the ride i don't know why you would do the f sport but if you do want it it's 81,450 for rear wheel drive 84,670 for all wheel drive again I don't think it's strictly necessary. Then there's the LS500 hybrid. So that is $79,960 for rear wheel drive or $83,180 for all wheel drive. And again, I don't think that tra uh, drivetrain is as smooth or as powerful or as luxurious as this twin turbocharged V6, so I wouldn't get that as well. And as I mentioned, the car we have is pretty well optioned. So 78,670 to start, but we do have some optional packages here. $3,000 gets you the Lexus Safety Plus. That gets you pre-collision braking, active steering, pedestrian alert, front cross traffic, and lane change assist. I think the front cross traffic system is really cool. It gives you an alert in the head up display when there's oncoming traffic, but I really don't like the way that the self-driving systems work in this car. I find them to be a bit annoying and they actually made me sick on the highway, so I would skip that package. $1,500 gets you the adaptive air suspension with rapid height control which allows you to lift the car when you get out of it. I think that's pretty cool. $2,450 gets you the forged 20-inch wheels. I like the way they look. I would go for that. 
$1,200 gets you a head-up display. It's a very good one, so I would opt for that. $300 for LED adaptive headlights. That's pretty cheap. I'd go for that as well. $1,940 gets you the Mark Levinson Audio with 23 speakers. I think that's a pretty good value as well. $1,000 gets you the panoramic roof, so you get a front and rear sunroof. If you need the most headroom, I would say skip it, but it is nice having a piece of glass in the back. $800 for a 360-degree camera, that's a no-brainer. $410 for a heated wood steering wheel, also a no-brainer. And $595 for premium paint, I think that's pretty good as well. I think this paint looks gorgeous. Now on to the big option, the $23,080 executive package with Carico glass. Here's everything you get in that package. You get quilted semi-aniline leather, which is a bit nicer than the stuff you normally get in the car. You get a 28-way adjustable driver's seat. You get power seat belt buckles. It presents you with the buckle, and then once you've plugged in, it'll retract it back, making it easier to buckle in. Unbelievably luxurious. I love that feature. You get seat massaging on all four corners, a suede headliner, a four-zone climate concierge that automatically takes care of climate control, you get all the power sunshades, and you get that amazing reclining rear seat with the ottoman on the passenger side, and of course, the Carico hand cut glass with pleated door trim, the Carico glass being the Japanese technique for hand cutting glass. As tested, our car rings in at $115,970, which again, compared to the German options, is actually a pretty good value. Cool. And let's sum up our time with the 2020 Lexus LS 500. I think this is a very plush sedan, but it does feel a little bit confused. Like part of Lexus's design team and engineering team wanted to make it a little bit sportier and the other side wanted to make it, well, a Lexus LS. So it just kind of ends up being a car that's pretty comfortable, but not the most comfortable in its segment. I still think it's actually a really good value. Yes, a $115,000 car can actually be good value when you compare it to the Europeans that cost $150,000 or even up to $200,000. Those European cars are faster and they do drive a little bit better, but once you get on in a couple of years on those cars, those maintenance costs, they're going to add up, whereas this Lexus should be reliable the entire time you own it, which is why I still think that the Lexus LS500 deserves a CarBuzz score of great buy.